The last video I made was quite technical. It was a lot of maths and quite complex explanations of things. Basically, it was trying to say why you should always use weight when you're weighing things in perfumery instead of volume. So this video, I wanted to chill out a bit more, do something a little more easygoing and less, less heavy, you know, because those videos take a while to make and they also take a while to listen to. So today, all I'm gonna do is just smell some ingredients. I've got a load of ingredients which have somehow ended up in a box. I was moving them off of a shelf and in order to do that, they ended up in a box temporarily. So I thought this would be a fun experience to just take some lucky dips out of the box and see what we get and see what it smells like. So number one is Dimetol. I cannot remember at all what that smells like, so that's gonna be interesting to smell. Number two is Tobacco Absolute Virginia diluted to 0.1%. So that's quite a weak dilution, so I don't know if we'll be able to smell it, but we're gonna find out. Raspberry Leaf Absolute France, 0.1%. That, one, that one's weird, so okay. What else have we got? Monteverdi, right, I don't know what that stuff smells like. That stuff's interesting as well. We've got some musk ketone substitute. So that's a musk, which is gonna be difficult because with musks, you normally have to leave them a while on the sand strip to actually get anything. We've got cyclobute, okay. And maybe we're gonna pick one more, which is gonna be rosemary French, essential oil at 10%. Okay, cool. So. If you look here, we've got we've got a collection on the go. Okay, so we got our seven ingredients. Now, one thing I did not mention was it's actually a good idea if you don't read the labels before you do this, because if you don't read the labels before you smell them, then you actually have to guess what they are. And this is a really good kind of practice if you want to help learn your materials. Though I guess today we're not doing things super seriously. Um, so it doesn't matter. I mean, like I've got a I've got a coffee here now Normally you shouldn't smell if you have something like a coffee right because it's gonna your the air in your mouth is gonna smell like coffee So you're gonna smell coffee with everything. So it's technically not a good thing But I don't really care right now. The point is What are we doing? What are we doing? We're smelling some things. So I'm gonna take seven scent strips so we got seven of the scent strips and I'm not gonna label them today. So we're just gonna smell them without labeling. Um, but I am gonna fold them, which is gonna help us. First thing, what have we got? Um, we've got cyclobute. Now this, if I remember correctly, smells like peaches or something like that. So, and it's at 1% by the way. So, you know, all the materials that I use, I normally dilute them at 10%, 1%, open 1%. So this for me, like 1% is the middle of the range. So this should be kind of not too weak, not too strong, but it always depends on the materials because that's the point of diluting them to all the different percentages, right? Is to kind of see which materials are strong even at the low dilution, see which materials are weak even at the high dilution. That's gonna help us know how much do we actually wanna put in the perfume when we make it. So, okay. Now, this stuff smells kind of to me like a waxy peach. It smells definitely like that kind of orange, peach, nectarine. Sorry, when I, when I say orange, like not orange, like an orange, but that kind of orange fruit, you know, the like fleshy orange kind of fruits you get. Um, and, but it's kind of got this lactonic waxiness to it as well. So it does, it does have an, another note to it, but it's kind of a note that's hard to describe. It's not something that I could say is easy to put into words. So I've never managed to use this yet in perfume, but if I was maybe making some kind of fruity accord, peach accord, um, that's probably where it's gonna fit in as far as I'm aware. So next we've got Dimetol. Now, I can't even remember what this smells like, to be honest. I've never really used it much. Um, and it's at 10%, so it should be quite strong. Now the Dimetol to me smells a bit like linalol, which is another common fragrance ingredient. But what the smell is, is kind of, I would say slightly herbaceous, um, also quite fresh, 
and quite smooth. It's weird because I would normally think of a herbaceous smell as something that's quite sharp and prickly, but it seems like it's got that green, spicy herbiness on one side of it, but at the other, on the other side, it's got this kind of smoothness. Now, I know the linalol, which is the thing that it smells like, is used a lot. It's found in a lot of natural plants and it's used in a lot of things. So maybe this could be a substitute for linalol. I don't know. Next we've got Tobacco Absolute Virginia. So I would expect it to smell like tobacco and I think it does. I think I did. Did I put a video on this? Now when I smell this one, so this is at 0.1% which is quite weak. Um, so a lot of the smell that I'm getting is just the actual ethanol, which is what I've diluted it in. However, you can smell kind of a tobacco trace, definitely through that. But it's very subtle at this concentration. You just get a nice little, what I would say is kind of a tobacco facet, a hint of tobacco. Now the reason that this is good to know is because this gives me the feeling that if I were going to dilute that much further, I wouldn't be able to smell it at all. So this kind of allows me to know the concentration in my formula at which if I just want something to smell a little bit of tobacco but not super overpoweringly of tobacco then having around 0.1% dilution in my final formula is a good place to be. Next up we have Monteverdi. Now this is in the green family of things. It's a derivative of Cistri Hexanol which is a classic smell of cut grass. And also this is at 0.01%. Now at 0.01%, I actually can't smell this. Now it's actually a good thing that I can't smell this, in a sense. The reason this is useful is because I now know that if I want to use Monteverdi in a fragrance, I'm gonna have to use at least 0.01% if I'm gonna smell anything. Otherwise it's not gonna show up as such. Now, I don't actually know where the higher dilution is in the box of say the 1% or the open 1%. But what it smells like is kind of a green cut grass smell, which is what a normal Cistri Hexanol smells like. However, because this is a derivative, so it's similar, but it's got some extra bits added onto the molecule as such. This one smells, I think a bit fruitier if I remember correctly. And it's got some other kind of facets in it. So maybe some other time I'll do a video on the green chemicals and the Cistri Hexanol and the derivatives, because I think they're a really nice set. Um, and they're all top notes, very strongly top notes, which means that if you use them on the scent strip, they will kind of vanish after 10, 15 minutes, or maybe even sooner. So they're only gonna impact you in the very, very start of the perfume. So kind of when you open the bottle and first spray it on your skin, after that, they're gonna fly away. So there's no way of getting that kind of, those grassy smells to last for hours and hours and hours. So if you want, say, a perfume that's gonna last on your skin all day, and it's still gonna smell of fresh grass afterwards, you're not gonna be able to do it. Okay, now the fourth thing is Raspberry Leaf Absolute France. So the reason that I got this was I was trying to make a raspberry accord at some point. So I thought maybe Raspberry Leaf is actually gonna help me to make that. Now this is something that's not very widely used at all. Um, it's not very common to have this. So it's not something I'd recommend you buy. I don't think it's something you would ever really need, but it's at 0.1%, so it should be quite weak. Now, when I smell that, it does mostly smell of ethanol, but I do get a slight hint of what I know it smells like at the higher dilutions. So the Raspberry Leaf Absolute smells, I would say kind of like dried leaves, um, but not maybe dried autumn leaves, as if you went into a park in the water, autumn and you know there are all the leaves, kind of just like dried, um, dried just normal leaves, kind of like bush leaves or some leaves from a bush and you just like left them on your table to dry. Okay, the sixth thing is rosemary French essential oil. Now rosemary is a classic essential oil which is widely used um, and the main kind of traditional reason that it's used is for colognes which is the kind of the original major class of perfume um, or the kind of first Western style of perfume that was made kind of 300 years ago. So a cologne is generally something with a lot of top notes, fresh um, herbal ingredients, things like citruses and kind of herbs. So rosemary, lavender, and then things like bergamot and lemon and orange. Now, so this is a 
so it should be quite strong. And it is because I can already, already smell it um, as soon as I open the bottle. And it's super interesting this because it does smell like rosemary, of course, the plant. It's definitely got a sweetness to it. Um, kind of a, a sappy, herby sweetness. But aside from that, it's also got a camphoraceous sharpness, almost a kind of coolingness that kind of, you know, when you have a mint or something, the smell of a mint or camphor is quite kind of, that got that cooling effect. So it smells of that as well. So this at 10%, you can already tell is way too strong really to be used for a usage level for a perfume. Because if you use this stuff at 10%, the whole perfume is gonna smell of strong, herby, sharp camphor. But it's a good starting point. So this is why, again, the other dilutions are important. So knowing what it smells like at 10% is great to get the full enveloping effects of the raw material and to kind of know what that is in its elemental form. But then, because I'm never going to be using this in a perfume at 10%, because it's just going to blow the rest of the perfume to smithereens, you know, it's going to be so strong. It's helpful to have it at 1% and 0.1%, because at that point, you can start to get a feel for what it actually might be, what it might be smelling like on a level that's realistic to have it blended with everything else. Okay, and finally, I've got Mosquito Substitute. Now, I'm not actually very hopeful for this one, because because when you smell a musk, what I normally find is when you put it on the scent strip straight away, you can't necessarily smell it. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. It depends on the musk. Um, normally you have to leave it for say at least 10 minutes or so for it to kind of show up. Even then it's very subtle and you really have to kind of look for it closely with your nose so you can actually kind of get what it is as such. It's kind of like, imagine you had a, a page, say that was white, and then you were looking for a rectangle. The only problem is the rectangle you're looking for is a very, very, very light gray. It's almost as light as the page itself. So once you found the rectangle right, once you can see the edge of it, sure, it's easy to see the rectangle, but for the first kind of, the first while that you're actually staring at the page, it's gonna take you ages to pick up on that subtle edge in the first place to allow you to find the rectangle. And I find this is a little bit like musks. Um, when you put these on the scent strip, and especially if you haven't smelled musks much before, because they're so subtle, it can actually be quite hard to find them with your nose. But then over time and with experience, you get used to knowing exactly which register as such the musk is in, and then it get, becomes easy to find it. So. So when I smell that there, I just smell ethanol. It maybe does smell slightly modified. I would say it's maybe slightly sweeter than normal. It doesn't quite smell like normal ethanol. So I can smell the musk right to some degree, but I can't really smell it. So this is something I'm gonna have to come back to later in the next hours and maybe tomorrow even. The fact with the musks and the base notes is they should last around for days. Fast forward 10 minutes later, and I'm gonna quickly go through everything again. So, now the musk ketone has picked up some sweetness, um, a tiny, tiny bit. And it's, it does smell a little bit musky, very, very, very soft. I might also add that it's also picked up a little bit of the rosemary next to it. So, even though the scent strips are probably about five centimeters apart here, the rosemary is so strong that it's strong enough to actually make the scent strip of the musk start smelling of rosemary. The rosemary, it's lost its sweetness. It's still got its sharpness, that cooling camphoraceous note, that herbal note. The raspberry leaf, you can actually smell better now. The raspberry leaf at this point smells a little bit like dried kind of tea almost. It's still dried leaves, um, some kind of dried leaf, but it does have a slight tea-like nuance to it. Monteverdi, once again, I can't smell this at all. Even if it was pure at this point, I don't know if it would still be on this scent strip. We've got Tobacco Absolute. 
Tobacco Absolute, I would say, is the faintest trace of tobacco left on the scent strip at this point. A very, very slight hint, but it's not obvious at all. We've got Dimetol. Dimetol is going pretty strong. Still got that herbiness. It hasn't changed much at all. And finally, the Cyclobute. And the Cyclobute, again, is going quite well. It smells pretty much the same as before. It's a kind of peachy waxiness and yeah. So yeah, that's it. And that is seven random ingredients that I picked out of the box and smelled. And that is what they smell like. I might get back to making some more kind of tutorial style videos next week. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, for now, that's it. So enjoy the rest of your weekend and like and subscribe to the video. Leave a comment if there's anything else you'd like to see, any questions you have about these materials or anything else and enjoy your week. So see you soon. Goodbye.